you know, I was at the grocery store the other day trying to find some food, right? And sometimes it's hard to find actual real food at the grocery store. So I'm going through and I'm, I just had this thought in my mind. If we were to look at this grocery store from the viewpoint of what percent of all these foods have sugar, okay, pretty high. Is sugar the, really the bad thing or is it maybe the refined carbs or the starches? Or maybe it's the seed oils, right? High in omega-6. So today I'm going to kind of discuss different types of foods in relationship to how bad they are. Because a lot of times you are in certain environments like grocery stores and you have to eat something. So what would be better than others, right? Kind of focus more on differentiating sugar versus these omega-6 seed oils, okay? So before I begin, I just want to have you comment down in the section below. What do you think is worse, consuming sugar or seed oils? And I'm talking about the soy oil, the corn oil, the canola, the cottonseed oil, the safflower, the sunflower oil. I've done a ton of videos on sugar and how bad it is, and it creates diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. And I've also uh, done quite a few videos on omega-6 fatty acids and the importance of getting your ratios of omega-6 to omega-3. Ideally, I mean, like one-to-one -one would be awesome if you can go for that. On average, we're consuming way too much omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. I think it's like we're consuming like 25 times more omega-6 than we should in our diets. Yes, people will say that we need them, they're essential, um, but we don't need uh, as many, and we definitely don't need the type of omega-6 that we are being fed. But an average person, is, as far as looking at the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, like a 15 to 1 ratio. Okay, that's the average person in the U.S. Now, that's very, very conservative. It's probably a lot more, like 30, 40, 50, 60, I don't know, but it's high. It needs to be 1 to 1. These oils, these fats, okay, they're called polyunsaturated fatty acids. They're kind of like building blocks for body tissue, especially structural things in our cell membranes, in our brain. And when we have this imbalance, we get all sorts of problems, especially in the cell membrane. When you consume sugar, and I'm talking about refined sugar, like from candy, you know, added sugars and ice cream and uh, things like that. They also create some bad effects. They don't tend to go lodge into our cells like the oils, but they combine with proteins and they kind of alter the protein. And, and that's called glycation, which they, it makes this protein unavailable. That extra sugar doesn't tend to accumulate other than being converted to fat like the omega-6 fatty acids do. So if we just compare one aspect of accumulation in the body, when we take a look at omega-6 or seed oils, industrial seed oils versus sugar, industrial seed oils will accumulate in your tissues. They make up your tissues for a very long time, like 600 days. Okay, so that's the problem. They're not water-soluble like sugar is. They tend to accumulate in the tissues. Now, sugar can be burned off. Okay? When you exercise, you can burn off this excess sugar. Now, there's some other points that I want to mention. Do these refined oils deplete you of certain nutrients? Uh, they can, especially the fat-soluble nutrients. Okay, But what about the sugar? Does that deplete any nutrients? I'm talking about refined sugar. The answer is a big fat. Yes, it does. It depletes your B1 big time. The more sugar you consume, the more B1 that is needed to metabolize that sugar. If you're eating a lot of sugar, you're going to deplete your B1. You're going to have a lot of symptoms of a B1 deficiency. So we have B1, calcium, magnesium. We have deficiency of zinc, vitamin C. The chemistry of vitamin C versus glucose is very, very similar. So if you're consuming uh, glucose or sugar, same time with vitamin C, uh, it's going to compete. So the body's going to pull in the sugar and, and avoid pulling in the uh, vitamin C. And so if a person consumes a lot of sugar, especially through the day, they have a lot of gum problems, right? They're going to start showing signs of kind of a subclinical scurvy, which is you have bleeding gums, fatigue. Uh, they brush their teeth and they, the toothbrush is red because it's destroying the, um, the vascularization um, and making the blood vessels very, very weak, like the connective tissue. That's not happening just in your gums. It's happening throughout the entire body. So refined sugar does deplete vitamins. But what about fruit? 
Okay. Well, fruit has sugar, but it also has these vitamins. So chances are it's not going to deplete any of these vitamins. So that's a plus point for fruit. So if you were to evaluate the sugar in fruit versus refined sugar, of course, refined sugar is much, much worse. Plus the complications or the side effects from this refined sugar uh, can be countered or lessened greatly if you have phytonutrients. So this is why fruit is much, much better than refined sugar because it has all the phytonutrients that can protect you from the complications from diabetes. It's very highly likely that you would ever develop diabetes from consuming fruit. The reason I don't recommend consuming fruit is just that there's too much sugar and it bumps you out of ketosis. But anytime you're eating anything in the whole form, okay, there's protective factors in this whole form, whether it's a starch or a fruit. Now with these seed oils, wow, you're getting a highly refined, overprocessed part of a seed, which is the oil part, but nothing else. You're not getting the phytonutrients to protect you against the um, the oxidation that that oil is going to create on your body, especially with your like LDL, you're going to oxidate your LDL, and that's going to affect the inside of the arteries. I mean, it's going to create inflammation. It's going to pull things out of your body. And also, um, how do you think that they extract this oil from the seed? They use a solvent. It's called hexane. Okay, is it possible that some of that hexane is still in that oil, or does it magically go away? So you take this seed and you turn it into this oil with all these things that you do to it, and then you put it on the shelves as vegetable oil, right? Sounds really healthy, but it's really not. But the amount of this oil in our diet is just tremendous. And unfortunately, all this came from this huge push to replace the saturated fats with the unsaturated fats, okay? That's really why it's in our grocery stores in abundance, right? And you might say, well, we don't consume any of that oil. But what about your salad dressing? Have you ever tried to buy salad dressing without some of these seed oils? What about in hummus, right? They're supposed to put olive oil in hummus. They replaced it with soy oil and canola oil and even uh, safflower oil or sunflower oil. So we have all the condiments, mayonnaise, especially soy oil. We have the salad dressings. And then we have the restaurant foods, right? I mean, Wow. I mean, try to get some food that they don't use these uh, seed oils to fry something or cook something with at a restaurant, especially if you consume anything fried at the restaurant. Um, those appetizers loaded with omega-6 fatty acids, right? You might not make the connection, but I mean, just see how you feel the day after you go to a restaurant. Right? You, just, you might feel bloated, you know, kind of thick in your gut, probably because of those oils. Now, I'm not even going to go down the path of talking about like a fast food restaurant or consuming French fries or some of these obvious forms of deep fried foods using mega amounts of corn or soy oil. Under this condition where there's extreme high heats, and how many times do they use that same oil over and over and over again? I heard it's like weeks and months before they change the oil. But all of that oil is um, going to lodge into our membranes. At least with sugar, you can go and exercise and burn it off. Now, there's going to be deficiencies, so you'd want to take these vitamins back into the body, but I just recommend avoiding them. I mean, let's take a long-distance runner, right? And they consume this little uh, glucose gel pack, right? Filled with, you know, glucose or maltodextrin, right? It's going to deplete a lot of nutrients. They're going to burn off this energy for sure. But they're going to also end up with low blood sugar symptoms. They're going to end up with deficiencies, the type of deficiencies that you don't want if you're an athlete, right? Vitamin uh, B1, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium. You don't want those if you're running uh, long distances. I mean, you need that B1 to handle the, um, the lactic acid byproduct of the glucose metabolism. So you might end up with a lot of uh, sore muscles and uh, a lot of other issues like even lactic acidosis, which it's like affects your breathing. Now at the restaurants, if you ever want to know um, where to find the majority of these omega-6, just look at the kids menu, right? The deep fried foods, um, they have the French fries, of course, the, the deep fried hush puppies, the mac and cheese, all these highly processed foods with just a ton of omega-6 fatty acids. If we just look at these two omega-6 seed oils and sugars, Omega-6 fatty acids are much, much worse than the sugars. Now, the other really important point to know is that the ratios of omega-6 
6 to omega-3, they should be 1 to 1. Uh, like I said before, an average person has at least 25 omega-6 to 1 omega-3. So this is so far out of whack. So another hidden source of this is the grains that are fed to animals. So when you're consuming the conventional grain-fed beef or the grain-fed chickens, which produce the eggs, the eggs would be like, if we're talking about omega-6, like 19.9 to 1 omega-3. So heavy on the omega-6. But if we look at the free range, non-GMO, non-soy uh, fed chickens that produce these eggs, we get like a much better ratio, like a 1.3 omega-6 to a 1 omega-3. And they're discovering all sorts of things that can also improve this ratio. Uh, if a chicken is fed uh, fish meal, which is higher in omega-3, okay, it may be some flax oil, which has a precursor to omega-3, uh, then that uh, ratio comes way down to like a 6.6 .6 to a 1 ratio, okay, which is much better, down even to a, a 1 to 1 ratio. So it really depends on what they feed these chickens. But if you're looking for chicken eggs, I would really go for the pasture-raised organic eggs. Okay, not pasteurized, pasture-raised. And then, of course, you get the beef, right? You have the grain-fed beef versus the grass-fed, grass-finished beef. I've done videos on this and also a study that is quite amazing uh, showing the difference between uh, beef from a grass-fed or a grain-fed diet. And there is a huge difference. But typically, grain-fed beef is like 9 to 1. 9 omega-6 to 1 omega-3, okay? Whereas grass-fed beef is like 2 to 1. Now, when I submitted my beef from my farm into this, this study, mine was like um, closer to like a 1 point, I think it was a 1.1 to 1 ratio. So it was actually even better than most of the other farmers simply because my cows don't ever get the option to consume any grain at all. Because a lot of times, even though something is grass-fed, they can also be grain finished. There should be more transparency with what you're really getting. Um, and I think in the, going in the future, you're going to see that more and more. Because I want to know if I'm spending more money for grass-fed, I want to know it's truly grass-fed. Now, what about other things like um, nuts? Okay, Nuts are high in omega-6, but nuts are also high in these phytonutrients that can also balance out all the complications from the omega-6 versus those refined oils. There's no other anything in there that can counter all that oxidation. So even though nuts are high in omega-6, they're not nearly as bad. So again, we have to look at the whole picture to evaluate levels of how bad a food is versus something else. Now, if we refine that nut into like almond flour, for example, now we've gotten rid of some of these protective factors. So if you take these grains, right, and you turn them into flour, even if they're whole grains, you're still going to oxidize them, expose them to air, and you're going to lose a lot of the nutrients. So even though something is whole grain, okay, less refined, it's still a problem because it's refined. Other key point relating to these omega-6 fatty acids has to do with the competitive nature between an omega-6 and an omega-3 fat. Okay, They do tend to compete. So if you're consuming a lot more omega three fatty acids from fish oils or cod liver oil, which you should be doing. And at the same time, you're consuming a lot of the omega-6, they're going to kind of cancel each other out. So you do need to reduce the S6 and increase the omega-3. I think the best way to do that is by doing the cod liver oil because it's a little bit better than the fish oils, even though you can do the fish oils. Cod liver oil also has some additional things in it, like vitamin A and vitamin D. And then as far as these other oils, like cooking oils, you should use like butter or ghee, uh, coconut oil, lard, halo, extra virgin olive oil. It's very important to have those oils uh, as your cooking oils. Now, there's one last point I want to bring up doing a major deep dive into DNA. And I've been looking at quite a few reports. And out of all the things that show up as a common denominator, it's these polyunsaturated fatty acids, okay? It keeps showing up as an alteration in our genes. Now, what do I mean alteration in our genes? It means that our body has a great difficulty in converting the precursors 
like the ALA into the DHA or the EPA in DHA, which is the omega-3 fatty acids. So we have a hard time converting them. Okay, so if you're eating walnuts or flaxseed, things like that, you're not going to convert them as easily. On top of that, you're going to have a hard time absorbing some of the omega-3 fatty acids. So this is just another reason why these omega-3 fatty acids are so important to fish oils or even eating wild-caught fish, having that in our diets or even sardines. Huge. As you can see, if we compare these two things, omega-6 seed oils and industrial seed oils are much, much worse than sugar. At least with sugar, you can exercise and burn it off. You can take phytonutrients. You can take vitamins to replace the ones that are missing. And of course, the phytonutrients can protect you even if you have high levels of sugar in your bloodstream because you're a diabetic. So I just wanted to make this important distinction because you can't give everything the same importance as far as how bad it is. Uh, there are certain things that are much worse than others. Now, if you have not seen um, my video on the results of the study I was involved with comparing grain-fed beef to grass-fed beef, you should check that out. It's pretty interesting. And I put that video up right here.